close your eyes and focus on the breath. Try to stay with the breath as steadily as you can. If you find the mind beginning to wander off or to waver, just try to bring it back, make it more firm. Because it's only when the mind can really settle down and be at ease with itself, that's the only time when it can find true happiness. The Buddha once said, there is no happiness other than peace. And this is where you find it, when the mind is at peace. If you're looking for peace in the world outside, there's all kinds of disturbances that you cannot control. And we live in a world of birth, aging, illness, death, and separation. All sorts of things to get the mind all stirred up. So we have to bring the mind within to remind ourselves where the true values in life are. For our true happiness is. Because this search for happiness inside is not a selfish thing, it's our gift to others as well. The things you do, the things you say, the things you speak, they come out of the mind. If the mind is steady and stable, it's going to be sending out good currents. This is one of the reasons why when someone passes away, we try to do good. Being generous, observing the precepts, meditating. Because after the person is gone, there's no other way you can get in touch with them, no other way you can have an influence on them, aside from the, the energy of your own mind. And if the energy is erratic, unstable, which it often is at times of death, then the current you're sending out is not a beneficial current. So this is why we, we meditate, get together, think of the good things a person has done, but also realize that okay, that particular chapter in life has passed. Sometimes when you could talk to them and interact with them in a physical way, those are gone. You can still interact in a mental way, and if you can't get any sense of him, then at least you can send out good energy to wherever he may be right now. But at the same time, you have to realize, okay, that chapter has passed, it's now, it's now it's time for a new chapter. This is why the Buddha has us reflect every day that we're subject to aging, subject to illness, subject to death, subject to separation. Not just us, everybody in the universe. It's a universal. These things are normal. This is the way life is. To find true well-being, we have to look inside. We encourage one another to look inside so we can find happiness in the midst of all this potential for suffering. This is where it's important to make a distinction between pain and suffering. Pain is the physical pain that comes or the painful things that happen that are painful to the mind. But the question is whether you're going to suffer for them or not. That's the important question. And you have the choice. This is why the Buddha taught his teachings to give us the skill so we have the choice not to suffer. And part of his teaching is learning that there are things we have to let go. We do our best with what we have, and then when it's no longer ours, we have to let it go. And this has to, first not only to our relationship with other people, but our relationship with our own body. Because this is the other thing the Buddha has you reflect on when, when you around someone else's death is, well, death is going to come to you, too, as well. What are you going to do? How are you going to prepare? Do you have the skills you'll need so that when the time comes for you to die that you, you won't suffer? So again, it focuses you back on the mind. Everything focuses you back on the mind. This is where true well-being is found. And the well-being that you want to offer to others, this is where it comes from, from having a mind that's trained. So try to take care of this point inside. And then you want to dedicate the merit of your practice? Okay, then dedicate it from this point, this point of stillness. And this way the, the goodness of the person who's passed away still lives on within you. When Sariputta passed away, Ananda took the news to the Buddha. And he said that when he first got the news, he was knocked, knocked for a loop. As he said, the directions were dark. In other words, he was losing his bearings. And the Buddha asked him, when, when Sariputta died, did he take virtue away with him? No. Did he take concentration? No. Discernment? Release? Knowledge and vision of release? Did he take these things with him? No. They're still here in the world. So his goodness is still here in the world, and you can still maintain it. You have the choice to maintain it, and that's how you keep the memory alive. So it's time for a new chapter in which you're, the person who's passed away now lives on in you. And as for where, he, where he's gone in his new rebirth, we don't know, but you spread 
to de dedicate the merit of your practice? Because after all, where does your practice come from? The impetus to do this practice partly came from him. So this is your way of repaying your debt. And this way everyone benefits. You benefit, the people who passed away benefit, the people who are still here around you, they benefit as well. This is why training the mind is such a good thing. Its benefits spread out without boundaries. <laughs>